Hi, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, then welcome. My name is Rachel Jane, I am 27, um, and I am married, and my husband and I have a beautiful daughter called Georgia, who is now 19 months. It has taken a while for me to uh, record this video. I don't really know why, I kept just putting it off. But since I've recorded kind of five top tips for labour, I might as well tell you about my labour, um, and then it kind of makes sense as to why I would recommend doing these things. So once again, I understand that everyone's labour and birth are completely different. I'm only just telling you how mine went. I'm not saying it's the right way, the wrong way. It's just the way it was. Everyone always seems to be really interested in listening to labour stories. I really found them useful when I was pregnant. I wanted to know kind of every eventuality that could happen to prepare myself um, from nice and easy to out in a car park to surgeries to all sorts of things. I wanted to know everything that could happen. Um, and yeah, just a wee bit nosy. I quite like to know these kind of things. So if you are nosy too and you want to know my labour story, then please keep watching. So I was due on the 28th of July 2017 um, and I actually was a week over so I had Georgia on the 4th of August. Um, I had my first contraction at 2 in the morning. It was about 10 past 2. I got up to the toilet um, and I got a contraction and I, I can only describe it as period cramp. That's all it feels like. Now, I have to say that I do get really, really bad period cramp. I get special um, like prescription painkillers from the doctors that are anti-inflammatory um, to help deal with the pain. Um, so I'm used to having really bad periods. So I th possibly that's why my labour was quite easy because I'm so used to that kind of intense pain. Possibly. I don't know. Um, also, I think I said in my last video, my birth with, jo with Georgia is very similar to my mum's birth with me. So possibly it's a hereditary thing as well. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, so I got up, could feel period pain, but only for like not even a minute. And then once it goes, it literally disappears. You have nothing, no kind of even radiation pain or anything. Nothing. Just you feel back to normal. So I got up and I thought, well, if this is it starting, I might as well take paracetamol now to get it into my system. And then if I need to build up painkillers, then we can do that. So I got up and made a hot water bottle and that was fine. I got into bed, gave Martin a nudge and said, I think things are happening now. Um, and that was that. Also, I used an app called Flow. Um, I used it to track my ovulation to get pregnant in the first place. And then once you're pregnant, you click a little button, button on it and it changed like pregnancy mode. And that's the one that says like, oh, your baby's like a, a melon and all this kind of stuff every month. And then once you get to that stage, there's a... Um, contraction tracker thing as well so I clicked that button and it almost just it designs a wee graph and um, the more you kind of um, put into the app so I got that on the go and my contraction was 45 seconds and then 10 minutes apart so that was fine so I lay in bed for a good while and I think at about four o'clock I got up and put my TENS machine on which is a little natural um, pain reliever kind of thing if you want more information on the TENS machine please go um, and see my top five tips for labour video there's a little link there where you can get yours for hire um, as well so I popped that on because I thought again I might as well get it going at the kind of minimum stage so I've got time to build up as this gets more intense and then it must have been about five I think that my mum had text excuse me I'm getting comfortable so my mum texts about five to say what's happening any sign of baby yet how are you doing kind of thing and I had said yeah I think I'm kind of in early stages of labour my waters haven't broke yet but um, I'm definitely getting contractions and mum had said well I think for a first baby that's a week overdue I'd be phoning the hospital and letting them know and I thought yeah that's fine but because my waters hadn't broken either I thought well this could be days away I don't know how long this is going to be and I felt like I was coping fine it was just like a period pain it wasn't anything to worry about so I thought right you're fine um, and I think it was about seven that I phoned the hospital and they had said, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds like early labour. So if you want to get your notes and come up whenever you're ready, bring your bag and blah, blah, blah. So that was fine. Told Martin, tried to have a wee bit of toast, but I kind of, do you know that way when you're nervous, your mouth's dead claggy. And so I tried it, but um, it wasn't working. Um, but I thought, I'm not going up there without a shower. That's gross. I'm going to wash my hair first. So I went into the shower, took my TENS machine off, obviously. Went in for a wee shower. That was really nice. I put the shower on like the hottest setting and just let it massage my lower back. Um, and that was really good, that really helped as well. 
um, came out at this stage. Um, I did start bleeding, water still hadn't broken yet. And this, now that it's passed, I now know that this is this mucus plug thing. You'll read about it quite a lot. And in my mind, I just thought it was going to be like a bit of goo that came out. But it was a lot of blood. Um, just like period of blood. It was, it, yeah, it was not very nice, but that's what was happening. Um, and not bleeding, but almost coming away. Um, I know that sounds really detailed and really gross, but you're going into labour and a whole lot worse is going to happen. So you might as well just deal with it. So that started happening. Um, washed my hair, got it blow dried, got up to the hospital and I think at this point it was about half eight and this is where I met Rachel, my midwife, who is an absolute dream. I feel like I've met that girl for, I don't even think, 12 hours and I love her so much. I, I hold her so dearly um, in my heart. She's just the kindest, nicest person. I just fell in love with her that day. Um, so she was so nice. I had my exam um, and she had said, yep, you're three centimetres dilated and that things were going well. She said I was dealing with it beautifully and if I wanted painkillers, I could go up the road and kind of continue. What she did say was, um, this is when I get a bit gory, um, she had said that the neck, I think would it be the neck of my womb? I don't know, some kind of neck was spongy and what she said is that's good. So as much as I'm only three centimetres, because it's spongy, it'll be quicker. And she said that she finished at four o'clock that day, so she expected to be delivering my baby today so that was exciting and um, i learned at one of the classes that when you have contractions it's not just opening it's kind of opening and pulling back so whatever this neck thing is that i'm talking about can't remember the name of it that's opening cervix is in i don't know <laughs> so it's kind of opening and pulling back so because it's spongy that was going to be easier to deal with so that was fine and I thought, oh no, I've got my wee Game Boy 10s machine, I'm fine, I'll go home, I didn't want any more painkillers. So I just kept thinking, it's not sore, it's powerful, but it's not sore, it's definitely like a, oh, but I, I hands up, I cannot tell you that this pain was sore. So I thought, well, I'm not taking painkillers yet, if this is going to go on for days. But from that point, um, this is maybe about nine o'clock now things really started to pick up speed. I think between having the exam that was basically a sweep um, and the fact that Martin picked up his new car just kind of days before I went into labour, which is a big three series BMW with like sports suspension and stuff. I think driving home in that seat kind of made things go as well after the after the sweep. So I got in and it was getting intense. So uh, at first, I think I was holding onto like the window ledge in the living room. I was thinking, oh, right, okay, this is getting tougher. I boosted my wee Game Boy machine and it was just getting more intense. It's the only word I can use to describe it. I know my friends get really bored listening to me because they want to know, like, oh, it's the worst pain I've ever had. No, it's not. It's just the really powerful pain, a yeah, powerful sensation. So that kind of wasn't working. And I thought, I remember going to the physio classes in the hospital and she kept saying, um, upright and open, I think she called it. So I thought, I'll go onto the bed in the bedroom go on all fours and you, I think this is when I started to turn a bit animalistic because I kept thinking what did cave women do? Do you know what I mean? They didn't have stirrups so go on your hands and knees. So I got on my hands and knees and just kind of rocked a little bit and that did help quite a bit um, and then I must have done that for about 10 minutes and thought this is getting really intense and realised if I go into the big bathroom the if I sat on the toilet pan it would take the pressure away from my pelvis kind of thing but I was sitting down so that was fine done that the midwife gave Martin the direct phone number when we went up for my exam the first time because we don't need to go through triage like you're in labour just phone us when you're on the on the way up again um, and we'll get the room sorted so I think I, I was on the toilet for three contractions um, but at this point my body started pushing I wasn't doing anything and again if you watch my um, five top tips for labour video I, I was telling you how if you were in a coma, you can still give birth um, to your baby if you were pregnant. And this is when I totally understand it. I was not doing anything, but my body was really pushing. So I think I started making different noises and Martin just burst into the toilet. He's like, get in the car, we're going to the hospital. He had tried to phone the number that we had been given, but basically the lines were down. Um, it wasn't that there was someone on the phone or they were busy. We couldn't get in any. We couldn't phone triage, couldn't phone them. So he's like, get in the car, we're going. That was fine, got there, but the whole time I was in this bloody new fancy car thinking, do not be sick, do not be sick, do not have this baby in this car. So I 
I'm more worried about his bloody fancy leather seats, never mind <laughs> having Georgia. So that was fine, we got to the hospital and as I say, the maternity unit in the RAH is on a hill. So Martin dropped me off there and then went to go and get a car space and I went up and I'll never forget. <laughs> there was this poor little lady in the lift. So my bump, I was like kind of holding my bump. I was kind of at this stage holding myself because it was so powerful that I genuinely thought I'm going to have my baby in this car park. I think this must be about, this is when I kind of forget times and things, I don't remember much of this part. I think we must have been about half ten now, so the difference in about an hour, this ramped up really quick. So half ten, I was standing in the lift, doing all this stuff, holding myself like an utter, and this wee lady said, oh hen, when are you do, hun? And I was like, an hour! <laughs> I just knew like that baby was coming. So that was fine. Got up to the maternity unit, frightened this poor lady. And uh, I buzzed through and I could see Rachel through. I think she was dispensing drugs or I don't know what she was doing. And I was like, oh, it's Rachel Jane Murray. She was no bother, I'll be there in a minute. But at this point I was panicking. Martin wasn't there to remind me to breathe. I got my knickers in a twist. My breathing was all over the place. I felt like I was kind of hyperventilating and holding myself, holding onto the wall. Cause I felt really dizzy as well. But it's just power that's coming out of you. There was no, I wasn't sore. It was just power and really not wanting to have my baby in my trousers. <laughs> so she seen me through the glass, came swinging round, got me and was rubbing my back and things. And just as she kind of calmed me down, Martin came round from the lift and I've never seen anyone go grey in my life. Just, I think he thought my child's in her trousers. Like, I think he thought she's had that baby. I've, oh, bless him. It just, it was such a shame. And Rachel was just the loveliest. She was just like, we're fine. Let's go and have a baby. And I thought, yes, <laughs> let's. So we went into the room, got examined again. Um, and again, this is, by the way, my water still haven't broken. So went into the room. There's still quite a lot of blood. Um, but again, this is, Rachel was just the nicest. I kept getting quite embarrassed and thinking, oh, God, and Martin's seen all that. And you just, but she was like, what mess? And everything was tidied up. By the time I looked up again, she was just the nicest person. Um, examined me, boom, 10 centimetres. So within, what, an hour, an hour and a half, I had got fully dilated and um, we were ready to go. She could see the baby's head um, and a big sack of waters. So that was fine. So I got into my wee goodie, my wee hospital gown thing and we walked along. I don't have any recollection of this, but Martin now tells me while well, wet myself. But I, obviously I've got a human in my pelvis. So I was waddling and I've got this thing on. So my wee bum's hanging out of the bag. And he thinks this is dead funny. The other thing I forgot to say to you was there was no other patients in the ward um, from my exam and like even now still nothing. Um, I am the luckiest person you've ever met so that was nice and she was like well let's go and fill up the water bath and we'll go and have a nice bath and I thought great I'm really excited about that actually. I have no idea how many contractions I had in between. They've still not got much closer. They were always 45 seconds from like until George was born as far as I can remember 45 seconds. And they maybe got a wee bit closer, but I felt like they were always 10 minutes apart, 45 seconds. So that's why I never rushed to go to the hospital because things weren't getting closer. Um, so yeah, we got into the birthing suite, into the pool. It took me a wee while. I remember going, there's a ramp up and I had to stop and that's when I got gas in the air. And I just get, get like, I never asked for it. I get given it and, well, I might as well. Like, she knows best. I was dealing, like, doing whatever the midwife told me to do. Um... And again, once it stops, you're absolutely fine. So I was obviously really making like kind of animalistic noises and taking this gas in there, my wee bum's hanging at the back. And Martin's face was a bit like, oh my God. And then once it stopped, I was like, oh darling, are you okay? Is everything all right? <laughs> like, it's such a weird feeling. It's such a weird experience. Um, and then again, I had to stop kind of halfway up into the pool because I had a contraction. And then I don't think I was in for very long because if I got in, if Martin dropped me at the hospital at a half 10, Georgia was born at 11.27, so I think it must have been about 11 o'clock because it took you half an hour to fill up the water bath. Um, so I think I was maybe in it for half an hour and it was dead nice. They had the lights all down. Um, I feel really bad because I don't remember the other midwife's name. She <laughs> was behind me with a weird, like, bendy mirror and a torch to see how things were looking. Um, but yeah, Rachel, we were just having a laugh. We were just chatting about stuff. She put my cannula in and, like, blood really squirted out it and she was like oh god she, like everything was just dead nice and relaxed she felt like a friend i think we were similar ages as well so that was quite nice um i just felt so comfortable I don't remember looking at martin 
he was next to me on a chair kind of rubbing my back and stuff but I don't really remember seeing his face um, and I remember getting shouted at once this is me typical me though I run before I can walk and I can I know I am right I'm always the same and I'm never right and nine times out of ten I'm wrong but I just bash on ahead with stuff so my contractions were coming and my body was just pushing and I felt like oh just get out just hurry up and get out so the midwife shouted at me twice like stop pushing because you're going to tear and that's fine so I thought oh god right and then the next time she said stop when she told me to stop Georgia came out and I worry basically but bearing in mind my waters haven't broken so she was in her kind of sack that was floating about in the water um, and yeah it was amazing it was so such a good feeling um, and I remember going in to the water and I kind of flipped my leg, my leg around and picked her up and she was just this weird wee purple gooey thing <laughs> she was just dead cute and I remember her feet being so bent back just, they were, her feet were almost like this against her shins um, but she very she hardly cried she cried a wee bit and then she was dead wide eyed staring at us um, Martin cried a little bit I think I didn't I think I was in a bit of shock um, and I got dead upset I remember thinking why am I the ice cream like I never cried but I thought I'd cry my baby was born but um, I just couldn't like I was just dead like it's weird it's like a big love bubble instantly thought ah, that's my wee baby and it, nothing was a shock like when I seen her and I thought of course you look like that it was dead weird like I remember thinking in my head, oh, what's she going to look like? She's going to have blue eyes, she's going to have big lips, she's going to have dark hair. Of course she looked like the way she looked. I just thought that makes so much sense. Like, that's exactly you. She was just beautiful. And then uh, I get asked if I wanted my jag for the, the vitamin, vitamin K. Or did Georgia get vitamin K? I think Georgia got a jag for vitamins and I got a jag to help the placenta come. And actually, I think that was like two contractions and that came. I've heard so many horror stories about how oh your tummy has to get massaged like a bit of dough to get this um, placenta out. It just kind of came away. I kind of forgot that was part of... I thought, like, I, once Georgia was out, I was like, oh, yay. I forgot that that had to happen as well. But it was fine. And we just sat in the pool for ages. And then eventually the midwives got me out and got me on the bed. I did get a second degree tear, which is obviously because I was bashing on ahead and just she kind of came out, but because she came out in a whinny, usually it would be like a bit of the head, head, shoulders, and Georgia came out with a rocket, which is exactly what happened with me as well uh, when I was born. So obviously that's forceful. Um, and I've got a second degree tear, which means the muscle, I think it's the the skin's ripped through to the muscle or the muscle's torn a little bit. I can't really remember. Um, but couldn't care less. Honestly, it was the weirdest feeling so I remember being on the bed and I was really shaking, like everything was trembling and freezing, absolutely freezing. And Rachel was kind of rubbing my leg and she was like, it's fine, it's just adrenaline, like it's really warm in here, you're, you're absolutely fine. And eventually I kind of calmed down, she put, I'm sure she put a blanket on me and kind of curried me in while I was getting my stitches, but we were having such a laugh getting that done. Um, she was like, I'll stick a few in, give you a designer and all that kind of stuff. It was great, it was so funny. Whilst another midwife had um, Georgia over the side and she was doing her kind of newborn test. Even silly things, like she was shouting over, she was like, yep, 10 fingers, 10 toes, two eyes. Like it was just dead cute, like telling me everything. And they were having a laugh, like giggling away, kind of coochie cooing over her. I think because I was the only patient in the whole ward that I got such a good experience. I had so much attention. Georgia got so much attention. Um, Actually, what you might not know about us, I am a Group B strep carrier um, and had to get, I was supposed to get antibiotics through um, IV drip, which is my wee cannula thing, um, but because my delivery was so quick, I only got one, I don't even know if we finished the first bag, um, and Georgia was born too quick, so it never even touched her, um, never mind me getting my second bag to get into her kind of thing, so we were kept in overnight and um, because she never got the antibiotics that she should have got just precautionary she got her temperature checked every two hours which was fine um, it was just the wee thing under her underarm she hated it she honestly hated getting that done I get so much help to breastfeed again possibly maybe why I had such a good um, positive breastfeeding journey I also do believe that it's hereditary um, my granny had eight kids including my mum who's a twin um, and breastfed them all. My mum breastfed us with and no one has had any issues. So I think it, for breastfeeding, I think it's hereditary with us. 
but I also think I had such good care and attention um, in the hospital. Everyone gave me lots of tips and at about two, maybe three in the morning, kind of following morning, there's no way you're going to get any sleep. Like even if like being on my own, there was no one else there snoring or crying or screaming or whatever like that would put me off. But it's just so much adrenaline, like so much had happened and everyone's texting and I wasn't going to sleep. So one of the midwives, she was a bit more old school, came in and she was definitely a rest as best nurse. But each to their own, I don't really care. Like I, I was fully prepared with a Tommy, a Tommy Tippy prep machine and bottles and stuff in the house. So I was never set in my ways. But she gave me kind of a one-to-one -one lesson kind of thing for about an hour, maybe two hours. I can't even remember the time. She was showing me how to lie on my side and feed her, how to, if I wanted, I could have her on my shoulder and feed her. All sorts of things, how to latch her on and off, how to, what's right, what's wrong, what what to do if this happens, all the rest. But she was fantastic. It was so good. And to have that care was really special. Um, so I just had a wonderful time. I had such a nice birth. Um, even although I was the only patient and Martin couldn't stay, but he kind of wanted, I think he wanted a really good, decent sleep anyway. Before we brought the baby home, he wanted to kind of tidy up the house and just get things ready. Um, he went out to get some flowers and chocolates and things for the midwives because they were just so beautiful. They were honestly the nicest folk. Um, so I just had such a positive, happy experience. It just goes to show that you can have a nice labour and it can be quick and it can be painless. I'm still, I'm still sticking by that it was painless, it was powerful and it was really intense, but it wasn't painful. Um, and I'm sticking by that. I just want to say that this is just my story and it's just the way things had happened with me should anything needed to have been kind of any kind of intervention, if I would have needed any kind of forceps or section, whatever needed to be done would have happened and that would have been perfect as well because my baby came um, absolutely fine. So please don't be nervous if you are going into labour, if you're watching this and you're pregnant, try and embrace it and try and be excited about the end goal kind of thing don't focus on the labour focus on the fact you're going to get your baby soon because that's what I did and I found it really exciting and um, so yeah if you are um pregnant at the moment I do wish you all the very best and I can't wait to see all your little pictures if you've got any comments or questions or anything please comment below or you can message my Instagram and I will get back to you um with kind of advice or information or whatever it is that you're looking for I will link the TENS machine um again under this one as well um, because I found that really useful for my labour. But yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. If you did like this, give it a thumbs up and check out some more of my other videos. Um, and if you've got any ideas or anything else that you would like to hear, then give me a wee message. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye.